My motivation behind being one of the group who set up the Institute and working in the Institute is that I want to make sure that those most in need get the best of help delivered by those who are most uh, and best prepared to do it. I want those who go out to help to be fully prepared to understand the much broader context in which they will work, the vulnerability of people, how they can navigate their way through the complex political, social and economic environment. Disaster management is the organisation and management of resources and responsibilities in response to any kind of humanitarian emergency. Um, in particular, it focuses on the cycle of disaster preparedness, disaster response and disaster recovery. And when thinking about the, that cycle, um, it's a non-linear process. Those things, they overlap with each other, they mutually construct each other, they don't happen in isolation. Resilience is the ability of a community to withstand a disaster event. It reduces the impact of disasters on lives, livelihoods, and in terms of costs that are incurred when a disaster happens. An example of resilience building is in, in Mozambique, where the government has put in place some policy measures to protect communities from the flood events uh, by improving the early warning systems where the communities are able to use flags to signal the, the onset of floods. Disaster response is often seen as the second phase in the disaster cycle. So it's when there's a focus on the immediate impact of disasters. So the first responders to disasters are often people that live in the area. They're the ones searching through the rubble to, to find people, to rescue people, and the local military and the local governments. So it's really, really important to work with these local actors rather than international organisations coming in and working on their behalf. In 2010, an earthquake struck Haiti. It registered seven on the Richter scale. Now this was a devastating disaster with over 300,000 people injured, over 220,000 people killed, and an estimated 1.3 million people were left homeless. What we saw in Haiti was a response that was very improvised. It was very disorganized. There was a lot of problems with clashes with local cultural norms, which made the response less effective and in many ways damaging to the local communities. And lessons learned in, are numerous and HRI has been involved in this research. So disaster recovery is the, the silent phase of disaster management. It's the least sensationist. It's what happens when news teams go home and the general public stop hearing about a disaster incident or a disaster event. Disaster recovery can take a month or it can take generations. It really depends on the kind of disaster incident and the impact that it has and where it has happened. So when thinking about disaster recovery, it's not about trying to recreate a context that existed before the earthquake or before a hurricane or before a drought. It's about moving forward and trying to recreate a new society that is more sustainably developed, is more resilient and more able to cope with these kinds of challenges. In September 2007, Hurricane Felix hit Nicaragua on the Atlantic coast. It was declared an international emergency because of its grade five status and caused millions of dollars in damage. So my interest in the recovery process in Nicaragua was about how different farming communities were differently vulnerable and therefore had different experiences of the same hurricane. The same grade five hurricane doesn't affect everyone in the same place equally. It depends on things like livelihood diversification, vulnerability, um, whereabouts someone's house is, is it placed on a slope or in a valley, how secure are people's domestic arrangements. So my research was about trying to understand the difference between different kinds of farmers in the same village who had all been affected by the same hurricane. It's fundamental to the original concept of humanitarianism that it was radical and it was about making change. And this is what the Institute does. With the, the Institute has radical thinkers, people who want to make change, and that's what we do.